Alright, so Everything Everywhere All At Once is my favourite film of 2022, and I thought what better way to close out the air than with a big breakdown of the movie. In this video, we're going to be going through the film scene by scene to point out all the hidden details, easter eggs, and little gems that elevate this above most of the other movies released this year, in my opinion. To me, everything's really well put together, with even the title sequence being something that's staggered throughout the film during several shots that all echo each other. Now, throughout the film, we follow a laundromat owner called Evelyn who's down on her luck. After being called into the IRS, her husband's body's possessed by a man claiming to be him from the Alpha Universe. He drafts her into a multiversal war against a force known as the Jobu Tabaki, who has the potential to destroy all life as we know it. The name Jobu Tabaki is a bit of a weird one, and it was said by the creative team that this was chosen because it's just a bunch of sounds that don't mean anything. It's meant to be disjointed and incomprehensible, much like the multiverse itself and all the things that exist within it. Revealed to be Evelyn's daughter Joy, Jobu was selected by her mother to be someone who would travel across the multiverse and reach out to all other forms of life. Unfortunately, a fractured her mind, and Alpha Joy now exists everywhere all at once. She can see everything, and thus, through seeing all life, she realizes that nothing else matters. It's kind of like when you see those You Are Here Universe memes and Joy saw everything as being insignificant. She then placed everything onto a bagel, and this in turn created a black hole that can destroy all life everywhere. Now, a bagel being used for this actually has a deeper meaning. Howard Bloom theorized that the universe itself is shaped like this, and thus the idea that a bagel encompasses everything has more to it. There's also this idea of bagel shapes, which appear throughout the film. A bagel is it's a circular shape, and at the centre of it is another circle. Now, circles appear throughout the movie constantly, and we open the film with a family singing karaoke in a circular mirror. After this switches, we see a circular fan with a circle in the middle, a circular light with a circular ring on it, and another circular mirror. Wayman's face ends up reflecting in this, and it too carries a deeper meaning. At this point in the movie, the pair are slowly growing apart, and Wayman's actually planning serving her with divorce papers. The pair being separated by this circular mirror shows how they're on the opposite side of things, and when we see the universes later on, they're too shown to be circles. Thus, there's the foreshadowing here that Wayman's in another universe, and after their initial talk, Evelyn goes over to a cooker that has a round lid with a circular screw in the middle of it. On top of this, we also have the googly eyes that appear throughout. The eyes are circular, and they have their own circles within them. Now initially, when we join Evelyn in the opening, there's just the one bag that has the eyes on it. This is important, as it represents Evelyn being on her own. However, come the end of the movie, we get a repeat of this shot, but rather than being on her own, she's joined by her father, husband and daughter. Now as we said, the first scene just had the one set of eyes in it. However, this scene at the end has four sets of eyes. Just above the coat hangers, we can see a pair, and this of course represents her father. To the top right of Evelyn, we can catch two sets, and these two bags are together representing her and her husband. Lastly, there's one to the right of Joy, and this of course represents her. So the eyes all being together mirrors this opening, in which there's just the one, and it shows how the family has come together. Now we are introduced to Joy in the next scene, and this is done with her staring into a tumble dryer, or washing machine. Look mate, I'm not a washing appliance expert. Either way, these of course litter the laundromat, and they all have circular doors. The way the clothes are spinning here has them sticking to the sides, and thus they create a circle within a circle, referencing the bagel shape. Now guess what Deirdre's character draws on the receipts too? That's right, a black circle, and the followers of Jabu Tupaki carry the symbol on their heads to represent the bagel. When Alpha Wayman and Evelyn end up hiding later on, they also end up eating bagels, showing how, like I've been saying, it's all connected. Also, at the 2 out of 10 mark, we see the IRS bagel receipt that's sitting on the table. There's a calculator to the left, and if you look on the screen, that's right, the number is 55378008. Flip that upside down, it says boobless, and hey, that's my favourite easter egg in this entire film. Now, one of the most creative things in Everything Everywhere All at Once is the rapid fire montages that show Evelyn throughout the universe. So much work went into these shots, which are on screen for less than a second, and there's so much going on in them. For this breakdown, I watched them in slow motion, so we could go through them bit by bit, <sighs> and let's get into it. Now, the first one has Evelyn wearing a red jacket in a back alley screaming. Next, we have Evelyn and her daughter looking over the bagel. From here, we jump to her at the movie premiere, and this is in the universe where she never went off with Waymond. We then have her with blood on her head in the IRS building, and this is where she seemingly died at the midpoint. 
From here we jump to her singing, which is where she gained the breath control. Now these are all pretty standard and shown throughout the movie, however we next jump to the universe in which Evelyn died and we see her in an urn. Next to her is a fish tank being played on a TV screen, and this is a similar setup to the one that we saw at the stop beside the table. Next we jump to her working in the universe in which she spun the sign outside the pizza place. This was used by her so she could spin the shield later on, but the sign spinning is actually foreshadowed at the start of the movie. When the family drive to the IRS, they actually pass someone doing it on the street, and Evelyn potentially ended up as this person in another universe. Next we cut to her in a universe where cats are people, and then look at her in the desert. Judging by the suit in the back, this could be a nuke testing site, and Evelyn looks paler. Don't tell Nolan the test nukes in other universes, because you, you already given that guy way too many ideas. Now, we then cut to a horrifying world where she seems fractured and her eyes are bleeding black blood. Tying back to the nuke idea, we see a world that looks like it's in the midst of chemical warfare, with Evelyn wearing a gas mask and urban military attire. Next, she stands in front of a wall of fire, before we see her as a horrible lizard like monster. Next is a bit of a standard one, before we cut to her as a nun and then what I'm calling Star Trek Evelyn. We then get an animated world, which is one of my favourite ones. From here we cut to Evelyn as part of the universe, and this reminded me of Eternity from Marvel Comics. And from here we go to the Hot Dog Finger universe, where Evelyn's actually in a relationship with Deirdre. This shows how in the infinite space that is the multiverse, that even our enemies can be our closest friends, and it helps Evelyn to later understand how important it is to be kind to people. In this universe, Deirdre is the best thing that's ever happened to her, and she has the potential within her to, be, to become that in some way. Deirdre's clothes are really interesting, and the design for this was actually inspired by a real life IRS stock photo. Now after a return to the cinema, we see Evelyn as a man locked up in a jail. Really interesting shot before we transition back to the Jobu Topaki scene, before jumping into her in a neon world with her shoulders resting on a light and black tape around her fingers. We get some reoccurring shots before we jump to a really creepy one. Here we catch what appears to be a murder scene with forensics working in the background and police tape lining the area. Evelyn has her eyes closed and this represents her being the victim. We then jump to her in a HUD before seeing her blended into what appears to be a military airplane camera used on either missiles or guns. Next is her as a little dog before we jump to her dolled up looking like she's part of the Rio Carnival. More repeated shots before we see her looking like she's part of the member berries, and a shot of her also wearing a casa. We then jump to a shot of her in Asian dress before jumping to one of the great in jokes in the movie. Here we catch what appears to be a zoom call with Evelyn against a green screen. Now, this is actually the VFX team that worked on the movie, and this is them brainstorming what to use in the scenes. Here we can see five artists, and what makes the movie even crazier is that just five VFX artists did 80% of the special effects for the entire movie. Next time you watch a big Marvel or DC film, look at how many VFX artists are listed in the credits and compare it to this. Glad these guys got the props they deserve and that they got included in the movie too, as VFX artists in general are often overlooked. Now from here we jump to Evelyn as a statue, before seeing her standing on a beach in front of a burned out pier. I actually think that this is Brighton, which has a burnout out pier as one of its many landmarks. After jumping back to the IRS fight, we go to another world that looks like it's ravaged by chemical warfare, but this time Evelyn's wearing a different type of suit and gas mask. Now, whereas she was a nun in another universe, here we see her either as a priest or vicar before we jump to her as a tree. Next, we catch her back in the IRS building at a different part of the movie before catching her in a snowy street, and then we jump to a completely different actor used for Michelle Yeoh. This shows that in the multiverse, people can even be played by different actors, and you might not know, but originally this movie was meant to be starring Jackie Chan as Evelyn. No, it wasn't playing Evelyn, well, obviously it was he was playing a guy, but it just shows how things can change, and in the multiverse, anything is possible. Now next we jump to her with a short blonde bob cut, lighting up a candle, and wearing a tracksuit. Now if you thought the father and nun thing was weird, we then see a skeleton in a nun's outfit, taking it to the next level. From here we see Evelyn holding up a sweater over her face, and this is in the middle of a Polaroid. Next we jump to her as an alien, and can see pyramids are floating in the background. There's long been the theory that ancient aliens helped humanity build the pyramids due to the size and scale of them, and this world could indeed show that it was in fact aliens. Now from here we go to Evelyn drawn in chalk on some easter eggs, which is an easter egg before we go to a Twin Peaks reference. Huge shout out to John Morris on our Clips channel for pointing this out, and we can see the words meanwhile along the bottom, 
with a white statue in the background similar to the show. Now after more shots of other parts of the movie, we get a really good in-joke. Here is a YouTube video about Illuminati symbols hidden in Hollywood films for one frame. This is of course there's some Illuminati symbols hidden in the movie, and hey, a nice work guys. Anyway, more shots continue the montage, and we get a really weird one with Evelyn as a man who looks like he's called Ian or, or Dave or something. No idea what this is, but they love tennis, they bloody love it. Bet they hit the thumbs up button and, and also subscribe to the channel as well. And next we get an impressionistic painting of Evelyn. Multiverse of Madness showed us every multiverse has got to have a paint world, and this is of course theirs. We then cut to Evelyn wearing an 80s digital watch with her eyes looking out from behind her hands. We then see Evelyn as a little baby before jumping to her in a nightclub and then a world in which she's sort of wearing a white domino mask over her face. Next is a nun world where she has several markings on her face before we see lanterns flying up behind her. There's then a world where it looks like Evelyn is the centre of the multiverse and thus we have a multiverse that has a reality with its own multiverse in it. We then cut to her on some planes with what I believe are buffaloes behind her before jumping to a picture of a house with her face flowing above it. Following on from this we get a creepy pasta worthy image with Evelyn screaming as a woman in a cat suit stands behind her. There's a picture of a cat in a hat behind her as well and I hope this is a Halloween costume or it's one of the most terrifying universes ever created. Now the montage following on from this just has Evelyn with different backgrounds showing some of the worlds we've already visited with a couple of ethereal ones dotted throughout. And that's it. I feel like I need to lie down after that. Now after the introduction to the characters, we see Joy and also her girlfriend Becky. Joy then drops this line about how her mother might call her fat or something. Now in case my mom says something dumb like you're fat or whatever. I thought you said when she says shit like that, it means she cares. This pays off later in the movie, with it also being something that Evelyn uses to insult Joy twice in the car park. You, you have to try and eat healthier. You are getting fat. You are getting fat. And you never call me, even though we have a family plan. This shows she cares, and it sets up her amazing monologue at the end of the movie. A customer ends up complaining, and then later we see Wayman dancing along with him. Wayman's entire outlook on life is that people should treat people with kindness, and this is one of the first instances of this. Now Evelyn goes back into the room, and we see that the clothes bag she gets has a number 42 on it. This is potentially a reference to Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, in which we learn that 42 was the answer to everything. Evelyn also drops a line here, where she basically says that Wayman probably wouldn't have survived without her. However, in the movie Star Universe, we see what his life would have been like, and we learn that he's in fact been a successful businessman. Now in the laundromat, we can see a TV in the background playing a movie. This is starring Sunita Manny, who actually has a connection to the Daniels. Daniel Kwan directed the music video for Turn Down For What, and Sunita actually starred in this. Evelyn turns around, and we can see a little advert up for singing lessons with her. As we discussed earlier, there exists a world in which she became a singer, and the theme that Evelyn is multi-talented is something that's laced throughout the film. In the IRS building, we also see that she's tried to claim a lot of her hobbies as business expenses. As to how as a laundromat owner, a karaoke machine could constitute a business expense. You're also a novelist and a chef. Last time you told a singing coach and a watsu technician, I'm sorry. What I love this little touch as it shows how many interests that she has and it foreshadows all the different versions of her across the entire multiverse. Evelyn sits down with her father at the table, and to cement the googly eyes thing, we see some above the coat hanger for her father, and two bags above her. The blue one has big googly eyes on it, and to the left of it, we can see the white one, which has them too. There are actually three people in this scene, as we have her father Gong Gong, Evelyn, and if you look in the mirror on the right, you can see Wayman in the reflection. We then go to the IRS, where Wayman sees an elderly couple kissing each other. This is a life that he very much longs for, and it's brought full circle at the end of the movie when Evelyn and Waymond kiss in the same spot. In the elevator, Alpha Wayman takes over, and he pops up an umbrella with, with donuts on it, which, look, it's not exactly a bagel, but, but it is bagel shaped, and we're still going to be doing more circles in the video, so shut the f*** up. Now Waymond gives her the choice to turn left or right, and it's decisions like this that create vastly different lives for people. One minor change can have massive repercussions, and we see Evelyn's life playing out in front of her. Her father was disappointed she was a girl, and she chose to move with Wayman to America to open up a laundromat. 
She gets pregnant with Joy too, who of course is also a girl, but in an opposite to her father, Wayman is actually happy. Rather than going to the closet, Evelyn carries on, and we see the staircase where it all goes down at the end. Daniel Kwan actually cameos in the climax, and he's the first person to be sucked into the black hole bagel. He also appears during the Hollywood scene, and he's the first person who's clapped in the face by the Kung Fu master after robbing Evelyn down an alleyway. Now upon the travel to an alternate reality being activated, Evelyn looks into a round circular mirror. She's then pulled back through the office, and the creative team said they did this to reference the Buster Keaton film Sherlock Jr. This had a scene in which the background for someone changed, whilst the character in it managed to stay static. It's something that happens throughout the film, and the directors captured a lot of the background by just walking through the streets of New York and filming stuff on a GoPro. This was then sped up with Michelle Yeoh being over a green screen, which added to her being pulled through the realities. In the cupboard, she jumps back and forth between worlds, and we get some amazing lines of dialogue that reflect one another. But I cannot imagine anything mattering more than the conversation we are now having. But nothing could possibly matter more than this conversation we're having right now concerning the fate of every single world of our infinite multiverse. Deirdre, well we call him Deirdre, in the film they call him Deirdre, so sorry if I keep getting that wrong. Deirdre's awards also look like butt hugs, which we'll say because YouTube's been demonetizing me recently, and later on, they're, well, they're sort of used in that way, which is clearly a comment on the IRS shafting people when it comes to money. Deirdre sends her home to get her affairs in order, and another weird picture of a cat can be seen on her desk. When we later jump to the hot dog world with her, we can also see pictures of cats hanging up in her home, and maybe that's what the montage was referencing earlier. Now, after Evelyn hits Deirdre, it all kicks off with Waymond busting out the bum bag kung fu. Bum bags, but we're in America, so it's- Word of warning then. Out there, they call them fanny packs. Because fanny means you're ass over there. Not your minge. Now this was actually chosen by the directors because they wanted to play up the Asian stereotype of a tourist father who carries around a bum bag with them. This could also be a nod to Data's gadget belt and the Goonies, who was also played by Kei Hu Kwan. He decks them all, including the security guard, who we end up seeing a, a bit too much of later on. There's also an appearance by Andy Lee, and this pair actually own a YouTube channel called Marshall Club, which has a video showing some behind the scenes stuff from the film. After the fight, we also get a reference to Terminator. I'm not the Wayman who wants to divorce you. I'm the Wayman who is saving your life. Now you can either come with me and live up to your ultimate potential, or lie here and live with the consequences. Come with me if you want to live. Now in the alternate reality, we meet Joe Tupaki and also see Evelyn as a baby, who's then pulled through the universe before she gets killed. Joy changes reality by clicking her head, and in two split second shots, we see two worlds. The first has her spray painting a circle within a circle, and this of course once more represents the bagel. The second one has her about to head into a head-on collision, and this could be because Joy was jumping through worlds and made her lose control. Though I don't really see how, how else she'd get out of this, she's pretty f and just in the same way that a version of Evelyn has just died, it shows that there are echoes across the multiverse with Joy living in a reality where she's about to die too. We get some stuff filled in on the Alphaverse, and we see Wayman in the back of an RV. This is actually the laundry delivery truck, and it's what we saw the family driving to the IRS in. Rather than a guy spinning a pizza sign though, we instead see a homeless man with a cardboard sign that says Hail Bagel. The pair then make it to the stairwell, which is when Alpha Wayman starts to discuss the bagel. He says, Your clothes never wear as well the next day. Your hair never falls in quite the same way. This is actually a reference to the song Nine Days by Absolutely. At this point, Deirdre attacks him, and Wayman starts giving himself paper cuts to transfer into another universe. Oof, I don't know, I hate watching this scene now. I always viewed them as having to do something weird because it's so off kilter from the path that they're on that it actually opens up other paths and allows them to see another universe so that they can start to navigate it. This is why we get so many weird things, and the weirder it is, the further the path opens up. Wayman explains it like, like doing something weird puts you on the edge of your universe, which then opens up paths so you can travel into others. Evelyn fails the first jump, and she ends up in a car park outside the IRS discussing her divorce. 
I absolutely love this line, which of course matches up with what's happening on screen. Through the emergency, what makes you Johnny? You always get pulled away. <laughs> Wayman ends up leaving her, which the other Wayman thinks is referring to the divorce. He's ready to split because he doesn't think she's the right person. However, Deirdre still continues the attack. Wayman starts to question whether their lives would be better if they'd ever got together. And this is when we see Evelyn defending herself from Deirdre. Here we get shots from the real Michelle Yeoh's life, which are used to the backdrop of her being a movie star. Interestingly, the character for the film was originally called Michelle, but Yeoh had this change because it was just too close. Her training begins, and we see a sort of Kill Bill Kung Fu montage where she starts to level up. Later on, this ends up helping her to strengthen up her little fingers, and she uses this to bust someone up. They actually use a sound effect from Smash Brothers for this moment, which is such a cool easter egg. Now though I'm saying it's like Kill Bill, it's also clearly just riffing on 70s style kung fu movies with us even getting the grainy sort of footage that was common in the era. The teacher also says that even this cookie can be kung fu, and this is a similar thing to what she gave Deirdre at the start. The cookie itself is also a, a, a circle, with a, I'll stop. Now we, we see her on the catwalk and even get shots of her premieres. In the background, we can actually see one for Crazy Rich Asians, and there's several clips from real life used for these moments. At the premiere, we can also see that the movie they're watching is everything, everywhere, all at once, with Evelyn being a character. So we have a movie within a movie within a movie. Anyway, Deirdre is defeated, and Evelyn meets the Waymond of this universe. Now the scenes with the pair are actually based on the film In the Mood for Love. This is a scene in which a couple speak in an alleyway, which echoes how Wayman and Evelyn talk with each other here. Joy arrives dressed as Elvis, walking a pig, and this is where the movie starts to get even crazier. Joy face swaps sides on her head, and it comes through the back of her hair, which is again, is a reference to the switch scene that the T-1000 does in Terminator 2. She is a god, able to turn bullets into steam, possibly referencing the comedian taunting Dr. Manhattan in Watchmen. Evelyn is transported to the hot dog universe, and here we get a homage to Stanley Kubrick's 2001. That movie opened with monkeys at the dawn of civilization, and we see how the hot dog fingers went out in evolution to form the basis of this world. After this, Joy transfers her through to the bagel, and we see this imagery repeated in the architecture that surrounds it with two circles being to the left and right of it. Here Alpha Joy reveals what the bagel is, and also what she's doing. Now Alpha Joy doesn't want to kill her mother, she wants to find a version of her that can travel through the multiverse to the level that she can. Finally, she'll have some common ground with her and very much gain the mother that she was unable to have in all of the universes where she pushed her out of her life. She wanted to see if Evelyn would see something that she didn't and thus bring meaning to her life. In the end, Evelyn finds a purpose to the pointlessness of reality and says that we're all that we have so we have to look after each other. This is inspired by Wayman's speech which states that we're all alone and thus we have to look after each other and also be kind. We are told by Alpha Joy that she put everything onto a bagel, but when listing off the contents, she states things like this. All my hopes and dreams, my old report cards, every breed of dog, every last personal ad on Craigslist. The opening of these items fall from her life, and it very much represents the hopes and dreams that she had, but was forced out of having through Evelyn pushing her down a certain path. This black hole very much represents the pain within her, and this has become an all-consuming void that will destroy all meaning in the multiverse. The film culminates with Joy wishing to travel into this, a metaphor for her becoming lost in the nihilism of what she feels inside. Evelyn, however, realises that she can make everyone happy, and all those that have tormented her throughout the movie become people that she transforms by using their innermost desires to help to change them. Now from here we meet Alpha Gong Gong. He goes inside Richard Long's office, and we can see a black circle-shaped ornament. We can see on his desk that his name is Richard Long, and Richard Long is actually played by one of the directors, Daniel Scheinert. His name is Richard Long, which is of course a play on Dick Long, and he also has a little thing hidden behind his desk. Now Joy is let free while Sajobu attacks the van in the Alpha world, and at this point Evelyn talks about Rakakuni. This is her getting the story of Ratatouille wrong, however, in the vast and infinite multiverse, there of course exists a world where this is real. Her saying this could actually show that she was subconsciously aware of this world after jumping through several of them. Alpha Gong Gong gives Evelyn a box cutter because he wants her to kill Joy while she still can. 
This will mean that she will have one less universe to move around in because she'll be dead here. The safest universe is actually the Hollywood one, and this is for a number of reasons. Not only are the events of the film an actual film itself, but Joy never existed in this world. Because Wayman and Evelyn never got married, they never had Joy, and thus Alpha Joy cannot appear here, which is why she's completely absent from all the scenes with them in. Evelyn goes over to her with a blade, but she sets her free instead. Gong Gong calls in his forces, and Evelyn develops her skills, which they all do by downloading things into their brain. She sees a world in which she runs too fast, and falls on a stick, which ends up blinding her. Being able to navigate the world whilst blind means that she sort of becomes like Daredevil and doesn't rely on her sight which would be blinded by the tear gas. The way that these skills are downloaded is also very similar to the Matrix and which characters could download skills directly into their brains. As she exits we also see another circular ornament to the left of the painting which I'm just pointing out, I'm not saying it's connected to anything. So she busts up some heads and even fights the woman with the dog who swings the dog round like f***ing hell. You also get a close up on the IRS award and can see the name James White on it. This is actually the post production coordinator on the movie which is a nice little inclusion for this part. Now from here Alpha Wayman is killed by Jobu and Evelyn dies after vomiting. This fully breaks the fourth wall with the credits beginning to roll and the Daniels name pops up on screen which is sort of another cameo by them. Evelyn watches this play out and it could be a reference to the 2005 film Paprika. This had a character in a cinema watching the movie they were in and it had a similar framing device to what we see here. Across the multiverse she hops from world to world and it's similar to how the Jobu Tupaki moves. It puts her mind in a constant state of chaos and in a nice couple of moments we see her as part of a jury and also on a bus. Eventually she heads back to the laundromat, namely a world where she just left the IRS. The New Year's party begins and the idea of New Year is very important for the film. It symbolises new beginnings and making changes which Evelyn and the family end up doing from this point onwards. As she meets Jobu and has walked through alternate universes including one that looks like feudal Japan. There's a prison and a cartoon world before they become pinatas. Joy grabs a branch that transforms into a weapon and amongst these changes is an 8 bit one, a flag with a donut on it, it circles again, a number one glove and lots of different things that are on screen for a split second. Evelyn is taken to the centre where the bagel is held and she's given a book titled Everything Everywhere All At Once which has a cover with Evelyn on the front standing in a black circle. Evelyn ends up looking into the bagel and we get a close up of her eye which is once more a circle within a circle. At the laundromat Evelyn also signs the divorce papers and we see some circular coins with holes in the middle once more representing the bagel and how nothing now matters to her. She doesn't care about the IRS coming in to seize her business and exposes Rakakuni before she stabs Waymond. At the laundromat Evelyn asks what she's doing and we can see that she has a necklace with a circular pendant with a hole in the middle and Deirdre also wears a ring around her necklace. Keep telling you, circles everywhere. Now Evelyn starts to believe that nothing matters and she's arrested. At this point she's transported to a world where the conditions weren't right for life to form. When discussing this moment the creative team said that this was actually based on the children's book Sylvester and the Magic Pebble. Eventually Wayman pulls her back from going into the bagel and we get some flashes of their happy moments together. Even the highly successful Wayman says that in another life he would have loved just owning a laundromat and doing taxes with her. He embodies happiness and even his dustpan has a smiley face on the back of it. He and Evelyn embrace and Jobu ends up pulling her back. Love the details we have on her and we can see that she styled her hair so that it says Jobu. Behind her we can also catch one of her followers holding chopsticks and these are nested between his fingers making him look like he's about to do a wolverine. The bagel is brought in and Evelyn takes on Jobu's forces. She looks into them to see what pain and anger they felt and heals them of it. We learn that Deirdre ended up getting divorced as well and this made her angry so she can relate to Evelyn's breakdown at the laundromat. You also see the hot dog version who has to play piano with her feet because they obviously have hot dog fingers. Don't know why in this universe they didn't just invent something else other than the piano but moving on. We have a moment where Evelyn wipes away her tears with her feet and to the left of Deirdre we can see some hot dog shaped gloves. Evelyn is shot at and she stops the bullets again referencing Neo in the Matrix. There's one digging into her head and this is similar to the scene in the first X-Men movie. She transforms this bullet into a third eye and places it on her forehead. Third eyes typically denote enlightenment and the ability to see beyond the plane that we exist on. 
The third eye was also used in the Multiverse of Madness to show this as well. It's kind of funny how we had two multiverse movies that drop really close to each other that both use this device. Evelyn makes the first two people she grabs fall in love and follows this up by snatching the customer's grenade and turning it into a perfume bottle. The wife used to wear that exact same perfume, God rest her soul. The SWAT team member's neck problem is fixed and Richard Long gets gagged and then smacked. Evelyn then grabs the chef and they go after Rakakuni, which is what the guy really desires. Everyone is given something they want, including the Kung Fu master who also gets a cookie. Evelyn confronts her father and tells him that, even if he can't be proud of who she is, that she herself is. She tells Gong Gong that Joy is gay and refuses to ostracize her like how her father did to her. However, Joy pulls away from this and she and Evelyn end up fighting across the multiverse. They return to Brighton Pier, go to an airport and fight in a courtroom as well as a number of locations from before. In the car park, Joy wants to go their separate ways, which is of course metaphorically shown by her travelling into the bagel. The rock goes off the cliff, Evelyn steps in, and all seems lost. However, Evelyn has a change of heart, and though she thinks their life's a mess, she'll always be there because this is the time she has with Joy. Though the multiverse is hectic, they do get a few specks of time where it all makes sense, and they finally realise why they exist. Together, they will cherish those moments, and across the multiverse, we see as Evelyn helps the chef, Gong Gong accepts Becky, Wayman and the movie star Evelyn are brought together, and Hot Dog's fingers get up to what could be some hot dog finger. Now, they start off the next day on a new foot, and Evelyn wakes up appreciating everything she has. Though she's tempted by being pulled away into another reality, she chooses to remain in the moment. She's undistracted, happy, and content where she is ready to embrace it all and live her life to the fullest. This was a lot to put together and huge shout outs to our editors Stephen and Matt for getting this all done in the space of two days. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and make sure you drop a comment below about your favourite part of the film. If you want something else to watch then we have a big breakdown on screen right now and I hope you all have a great Christmas and New Year. If you're watching this in 2023 all the best for that too and if you're in 2024 and make sure you send me the lottery numbers for the past two years, yeah? Get them on an email right now. Anyway, thanks for sticking through the video. I've been Paul. Let's see you next time. Take care, mate. Bye.